Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, in a major step towards the exit from Mali of Vox's Bakken, anti jihadist force, the French army officially hands over the keys to the Gossi military base to the country's armed forces. Also, Ivory Coast Prime Ministers reappointed as Premier a week after stepping down, and President Alassane Ouattara names the governor of the regional central bank as his VP, a post that's been vacant for almost two years. Also, we take a peek at some of the debates sparked in the homes of Tunisian families breaking their fast together whilst watching some of the controversial new TV series often released during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. But first, French forces have officially handed over the keys to the Gossi military base in the north of Mali to the country's forces. It's the first concrete step towards France's military withdrawal from Mali as Bamako seeks assistance from Russian advisers suspected as being mercenaries from the Wagner Group. James Vazina has more. 100 kilometres to the west of the city of Gao, France's military withdrawal from Mali continues as confirmed this Thursday by the general staff of France's forces. After Tesselet, Timbuktu and Kidal, Gossi is the fourth base to be returned to Malian forces, known as the FAMA. In an interview with France 24, the spokesperson of France's general staff said they aim to remove the remaining 2,500 troops by the end of the summer. Mali's armed forces are going to have to carry out operations by themselves because the decision to remove our forces stems from the position of Mali's authorities. From now on, the fight against the terrorists will be their problem. These were the scenes in Bamako two months ago when the ruling military junta demanded that soldiers involved in Operation Barkhane, an operation against Islamist militants in Africa's Sahel region, to leave the country. The junta accuses them of being inefficient in tackling the jihadist insurgency. Paris, meanwhile, has refused to work alongside Russia's Wagner Group, which has been called upon by the ruling forces. Both Mali and Russia deny that the organization is made up of mercenaries and say that they're in fact helping to train local troops. The NGO Human Rights Watch has accused both Malian and Russian troops of killing hundreds of civilians end of March in the south of the country. Russian equipment continues to arrive in the country. Two combat helicopters and surveillance radars were delivered this Monday as ties strengthen between the junta and the Kremlin. Well, in Ivory Coast, President Alassane Ouattara's State of the Nation address on Tuesday saw him announce the return of Patrick Achi as Premier a week after he stood aside. He'll be charged with putting together a slimmed-down austerity cabinet going forward. Ouattara also appointed the technocrat governor of the regional central bank as vice president after the post remained vacant for almost two years. Now Fejani with more. Rumours that President Alassane Ouattara would be naming a new vice president during his speech in Parliament Tuesday had been spreading in the last few days. President Ouattara did unveil the identity of the next VP, current Central Bank of West African States Governor, Chemoko Melie Kone, a man who the president has said possesses all the personal and professional qualities needed to fill this crucial post. C'est un brillant économiste, un homme compétent et travailleur, qui a aidé à la réforme du franc CFA Ce qui fut une opération délicate. Enfin, c'est un homme de consensus et de probité qui a toute ma confiance. After the announcement, we asked some MPs if they believed Timo Kokone could be propped up as the president's successor, but they erred on the side of caution. Je préfère sourire parce que nul ne peut prévoir. Je vous assure, nul ne peut prévoir. Je pense pour l'état actuel de choses, il faut retenir que le président de la République, c'est Alassane Ouattara, le vice-président Septième Oko. On ne va pas aller sur la question de fin. Nous, en tant qu'opposition, ce qui nous intéresse, c'est que nous revenons à une situation de stabilité politique normale. On the other hand, some political analysts don't believe that it's too early to make predictions. Sylvain Guesson has told us that this move by President Ouattara is a clear indication that he is still in charge and already strategizing ahead of the 2025 presidential election. Look now at some news in brief. The first trial for war crimes court set up in Central African Republic was postponed on its opening day on Tuesday after the defendant's lawyers didn't show up. The case has been pushed back to April 25th. It's about the massacre of 46 people in the north of the country in 2019 by suspected 3R rebel militia. 
three of its members have been charged with war crimes and crimes against humanity. The Special Criminal Court was set up in 2015 and is seen as a milestone for the country. Rights groups warned that crimes against civilians during a decade of conflict often go uninvestigated. The UN's warned that 20 million people are at risk of starvation in the Horn of Africa this year because of worsening drought. Parts of Kenya, Somalia and Ethiopia had already gone dangerously long without rains, leaving crops and livestock destroyed and forcing thousands to migrate in search of food and water. This year's delayed rains have seen the estimates of those facing extreme levels of food insecurity spiral from 14 million to 20. The dire conditions have also been exacerbated by the disruption to supply chains and the spiking of the cost of food and fuel caused by the conflict in Ukraine. South Africa has allocated over 62 million euros in aid to help those hit by devastating floods in the city of Durban and the surrounding KwaZulu-Natal province. At least 448 people have been killed in the floods and mudslides caused by the heavy rains. Dozens are still missing and the damage to school infrastructure alone is estimated at almost 26 million euros. Now, Chelsea legend Didier Drogba has thrown his hat into the ring for the top seat in Ivorian football. He's one of six candidates in the running for the presidency of the Ivorian Football Federation. And this week promised that if elected, he'd do all he could to breathe new life into the country's footballing scene by creating training centres and upping the funding to local clubs. Noho Bershtaka has more. Smiles and handshakes, a beaming Didier Drogba unveiled his ambitious programme. If elected at the head of Ivory Coast's footballing federation, the former international vowed to invest heavily and put Ivorian football back on the map. It's essential to develop, modernise and maintain infrastructure. This will allow for a decentralized network of stadiums and training centers that will raise the level of the championship, attract sponsors and help foster new talent. Of the three candidates vying for the job, the former Chelsea and Marseille striker is by far the least experienced, but also the most popular. Yet Drogba's celebrity status is by no means a guarantee of success. In 2020, his initial bid for the job was rejected after he failed to obtain enough signatures. The vote ended up being postponed over eligibility issues and led to FIFA placing the Ivorian Federation under tutelage, an ordeal that shone light on the fragility of Ivory Coast's footballing institutions, which Drogba now wants to overhaul. If elected, he would follow in the footsteps of another star African player, Samuel Eto'o, who became president of Cameroon's Football Federation last year. Well, in Tunisia, for many families, the Islamic holy month of Ramadan is a time to come together and break the evening fast in front of the telly. In anticipation of this, new TV series are often launched during the period, often tackling touchy or taboo topics that are sure to get people talking. Our correspondents tell us more. Action! Action! Filming for the second season of the series Harga started long before the start of Ramadan so that it would be ready to broadcast when the holy month began. Unlike the usual soap operas, Harga sheds light on the problem of irregular migration, or Harga in local dialect, a topic which resonates with many young Tunisians. The month of Ramadan is an opportunity to talk about such subjects, an opportunity to create debate in society, because Harga is a phenomenon we live through but many people just think about it as a group of youngsters who leave on makeshift boats by sea and who may or may not make it to the other side. We've decided to explore why they make this choice. Cultural expression has been flourishing since the revolution. Director Abdul Hamid Bushnek uses satire. With Kenya Mekanish, a play on the phrase once upon a time, he uses a fairy tale setting to recount the political and social misadventures of an imaginary country in the past. We wanted an original, quirky take on Tunisian history, a look at how Tunisians might have lived, but also as a way to criticize contemporary society. This year, in the first episodes, the series looks at the political elites who have sparked frustration amongst many Tunisians. It's about a deposed king who's trying to take back his throne, but it's going to be complicated after all he's done. I wanted to talk about all that's happened in Tunisia without taking sides with anyone. Many families break their daily fasts while watching TV series together. 
Sara and her sister Hele watch, comment and critique side by side. Sometimes the on-screen offerings don't hit the spot. The problem is that some aren't made for families. They should warn us, not for under 12. I feel that with the economic and political situation and all the stress, we need lighter topics. There aren't any sitcoms this year. We need sitcoms, things that make us laugh. The series Sara and her sister are currently watching addresses polygamy, which is illegal in Tunisia. But such taboo topics are why Ramadan series continue to provoke controversy, debate and entertainment. Well, that's it for Oil in Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again if you can. Till then, take care.